Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. So in this video, I will be showing you what a ray is and how you can use it in Roblox Studio. This video will cover making a ray between two points and making a ray that goes from the front face of any part and points a certain length. So let's get right into it. So, before we get into Roblox Studio and start making rays, we first have to understand what a ray is. So, in geometry and in real life, a ray is finite in one direction, but infinite in another. The point at which the ray originates is called the origin. So, if I demonstrate here, this could be an example of a ray right here. And let's just say this point is point A. This would be the origin, and this arrow would represent the direction it extends infinitely. And in Roblox, a ray is a little bit different. Instead of being infinite in one direction and finite in another, it is finite in both directions because obviously a computer cannot compute something that's infinite in both directions. So if I draw a little ray here, It's the same idea as a normal ray. It has an origin. This would be the origin. And the origin would be a vector 3, a point in 3D space. But instead of just extending it infinitely in one direction, this arrow would represent a vector, and this vector would be the direction. So this is the origin right here. And this arrow is the direction. And the direction, which is also a vector 3, has a set magnitude. And so this basically means that our rays will only extend for as long as the vector is. Because a vector, as you know, has three values, the x, y, and z. But you can find how long it is by like finding the magnitude. And, and most computer software, is, it just gives you the magnitude. Roblox does that, so you can just have whatever vector 3 you have and do dot magnitude and it gives you the magnitude and in short the magnitude is just the length of the vector 3 and this magnitude basically tells the ray how long it will scan for it will scan no longer no shorter than that magnitude and the max magnitude for a ray in roblox is 5000 studs so anything exceeding 5000 studs will not be detected by this ray and you may be asking what exactly does a ray detect a ray can detect parts terrain cells, like water, a, a lot of things in Roblox. It can also detect like what kind of vector, like the surface it hits, which could prove pretty interesting in certain scenarios. But in, the, in its most basic form, what I use it for is by detecting parts. So now that we've sort of explained what a ray is with its finite direction and the vector 3 is describing both its origin and direction, we can actually get into Roblox Studio and start making them. Okay, so now that we're in Roblox Studio, we first need to put some parts kind of describing what our ray is going to do and where it's going to be. Because most of the time in Roblox, you don't really know your direction for your ray. You know your start position and your end position. And we're going to make these like parts. So I'm just going to resize this part real quick, make it. A little more boxy so this will be my start position I'm gonna go name it start and my properties make sure it's anchored and I'm gonna duplicate it me move it like over here and this will be my finish so I'm gonna group these parts And then, I don't know, we can call this my ray model. And in this model, I'm going to put a script. And so this script is going to create a ray going from start to finish. To make it easier, I'm going to make start green and then finish red. Just so you know which one's which. So it's going from start to finish. And we will detect any parts within that little radius. Or not radius, in that ray. So I'm going to go in a ray model, create a script. And this script 
will first define our start and finish. So local start equals script dot parent dot start local finish equals script dot parent dot finish. And now we want to define our ray origin. And so our ray origin is going to be the start dot position because that's where our ray will start. And the same thing as the origin. So it'll be start dot position. And then our ray destination will be equal to finish dot position. And so in Roblox, when you want to find the direction of your ray from a start position and an end position, you have to subtract the finish position from the start position. And these are vector threes, of course. So local ray direction will be equal to ray destination minus the ray origin. So now that we have the ray direction, we need to construct our ray. And the way we do that is by saying local ray equals capital R ray dot new. And this ray dot new constructor takes in the ray origin and the ray direction. And so on its own, like let's just run this. The ray does nothing. Literally nothing happens. And the functions that you need to utilize in order to get your ray to like detect parts are held within the workspace. So let's say I want to find the first part that the ray collides with. So this would be, and I'm defining local part because the function will return the first part that we collide with. So local part equals workspace find part on ray. On ray. And this is a function that finds the first part on the ray. So the first parameter is simply the ray that we need to use to raycast. And that's this ray that we made up here. And there are a few more parameters, but let's just run this and see what happens. So let's print the part.name. So we run this. You can see it prints print finish because let's visualize this. The ray starts in the middle of start since the position of a part is determined like directly in the center of it. And it goes all the way to the finish. And it goes, it penetrates finish. It goes through finish to the middle. And that's why it says, oh, I hit finish. That's a part. So if we don't want our ray to detect like the current model or like whatever, we can define a ignore descendants instance, which basically is whatever model or part you want the ray to ignore. And it'll ignore all the descendants. So if I do script.parent, if we check in the explorer, the ray model, which is a script.parent, has the descendants of the script finish and start. So it will not detect any of these if we run this. So if we play this, you can see errors because we are getting the part.name. And if we print the part, let's just print the part. You can see, if I play this, that it prints nil. So let's just say I put another part here. And we can make it a nice neutral gray. And I anchor it. And we move this up, like sort of in the line of sight. I need to make it bigger, just to make sure that it's in the line of sight of our array. If we run this, it will print part because this is the part that we that we're doing. So, but if I move, if I take this finish block and I move it, like let's say a little bit farther over here. If we run this, you can see it prints new because the array is going from here to here. So. That's one super basic use of array. So this is a pretty basic use of arrays, but what if you want to have a part, have array point from its like front face to like wherever you're looking. So let's take this start part for instance. I want this part to have a array that goes like on one of the faces, which is one of the sides of the square, goes in the direction that like I want it that I angle it like with the rotate so we first have to figure out where the front face is so the front face on this cube is facing this way let's just scale it out a little bit this way so we know it's like facing that way so this is where our front face is and now if we go 
and you can orient this like wherever you want. So I'm going to point it towards my little part over here. So now if I go into the script, I can leave the origin, but the direction will be different. So I'm just going to comment all of this out just for the sake of this video. So you can still see it, but now it's just commented. So I'm going to redefine the ray destination. So the ray destination, or not the de destination, I meant direction. So the ray direction will be equal to start dot c frame dot look vector times, let's say, 50. So what this basically does is it says start dot c frame and it goes to look ve vector. So the look vector is a unit vector, which basically means it always has a magnitude of 1. And it's basically, like, you don't have to understand it, but it basically just means this, where this um, front face of the block is. So this front surface, this is a look vector. And we take this look vector and we multiply it by 10. So that means the ray will start here, we'll take the look vector, and we'll multiply it by 10, so it'll end up, like, somewhere around here. So now, actually, you know what we can do? We can keep all of our other code. We just get rid of this and then paste it down here and then just comment this out so now what we can do if we run this it should print our part and that is because its look direction or look vector is this face and it just points out to wherever and if you want you can also change the look vector like make it go backward by going negative or you can make it go right by doing the right vector or you can make it go up by going the up vector. And if you want to do down or left, you just set it to negative of whatever is opposite it. So this is a way to make like a laser gun. For example, I did this in one of my games where I have a little laser gun. It shoots a vector or shoots a ray from the front face over a bunch of people. And if it collides with a humanoid, it kills it. So this is super useful and like a lot of different things. So I could like move this around. And if I run this here, it won't print anything because there's nothing there. And yeah, that's about it. So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this very simple ray casting tutorial. This is a super important part of Roblox scripting that I use in a lot of my scripts. It's just very useful to have a little line that you can point wherever you want and it can like detect parts and terrain. So make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Comment any questions or suggestions down below because raycasting can get quite confusing. And I think I might make some more ray videos, like for example, making a part that like conforms to the ray. So it starts at the origin and it goes to the, its direction and it stops at the end of the direction because that's something pretty useful for like visualization and it's really good for debugging. But that's it for this video. I hope you guys have a nice day. And goodbye.